welcome <clears throat> let us begin our discussion about the sun and potential of solar energy for in india the sun is the closest star it is a great sphere of hot gases and operates as a continuous fusion reactor about 75% of sun's mass is hydrogen and 25% is helium and the rest is made up of trace of quantities of heavier elements the average temperature at the center of the sun is 24 into 10 raised to 6 kelvin the outer surface of the sun is called corona the temperature of corona is about 6000 kelvin to be precise 5780 kelvin as shown here energy is radiated from the sun as a result of several fusion reactions taking place at the core of the sun the most important fusion reaction being combination of hydrogen to form helium the diameter of the sun is 1.39 into 10 raised to 9 meters while the diameter of the earth is 1.27 into 10 raised to 7 meters means the sun is at least 12000 times bigger than the earth in a single dimension sun emits heat and light in the form of electromagnetic waves these waves are called sun rays sun rays contain light as well as heat sun rays reach the earth in 8 minutes earth intercepts about 1.8 into 10 raised to 11 megawatt of solar power this is several thousand times more than the global power consumption rate the amount of solar radiant energy falling on a surface per unit area and per unit time is called irradiance shown here you can see here sun sustains an angle of 32 minutes with the earth so sun rays reaching the earth they are conical in nature in actual case so they subtain an angle of 32 minutes in all practical cases of uh, solar device uh, solar flat plate collector designs we assume that the solar radiations are parallel but this feature of subtended angle becomes important when we are designing reflectors or concentrator where optics come into picture this subtended angle comes into picture we will discuss more at the time of design of concentrating collectors but for all practical purposes like flat plate collector design and other photovoltaic design sun rays incident on a surface on the earth are considered to be parallel let us revise something about the thermal radiation because sun is radiating heat and light it is emitting energy so uh, let us revise some basics of thermal radiation the thermal radiation is a form of energy emission and transmission that depends entirely upon the temperature characteristic of the emissive surface so the rate of emission depends on the temperature of the surface so when a beam of thermal radiation is incident on a surface of a body or part a part of it is reflected away from the surface a part of it is absorbed by the body and a part of it is transmitted so when a beam of thermal radiation falls on a surface some part is reflected some part is absorbed and some part is transmitted the various properties associated with this phenomena are the fraction of radiation reflected called the reflectivity the fraction of radiation absorbed is called absorptivity alpha reflectivity is called rho absorptivity is called alpha and the fraction of radiation transmitted called transmissivity tau the three quantities are related by the following equation that is rho plus tau plus alpha it equal to 1 so the above properties also depend on the wavelength and direction of the radiation therefore the above equation is valid 
for the average properties over the entire spectrum. Most solid are opaque. For example, a, a shiny surface of a metal. It's an opaque surface. So when the surface is opaque, it transmits no light through it. So tau equal to zero. So for opaque bodies, rho plus alpha equal to one as tau is equal to zero. Similarly, if a body absorbs all the thermal radiation falling on its surface, regardless of the spectral character or directional preference, such that tau equal to rho transmissivity is zero and reflectivity is also zero, then the above equation is converted as alpha equal to one. So the bodies in which alpha is equal to one, such bodies are called black body. Uh, this is a hypothetical idealization. There exists no black body in a practical, in a real life world. So this is a hypothetical idealization that does not exist in reality. Uh, sometimes we think that black colored body or black painted body must be a black body. No, black colored body is not a black body. It is not a perfect absorber. Every object emits radiant energy in an amount that is a function of its radiation. The usual way to describe how much radiation an object emits is to compare it to a theoretical abstraction called a black body. As we discussed, a black body has a, uh, it emits all the radiation and it absorbs all the radiation. So it becomes a benchmark of radiation. So a black body is defined to be a perfect emitter as well as perfect absorber. As a perfect emitter, it radiates more energy per unit surface area than any real object at the same temperature. As a perfect absorber, it absorbs all radiation that impinges on it. That is, none is reflected and none is transmitted through it. The wavelengths emitted by a black body depends upon its temperature as described by this Planck's law. So the Planck's law, Planck's equation says E lambda. E lambda is the emissive power per unit area of a black body expressed in watt per meter square micrometers. This is micrometers. So E lambda is equal to 3.74 into 10 raised to 8. This is in the numerator. In the denominator, lambda raised to 5. Lambda is the wavelength of the black body, wavelength of emission. Then lambda raised to 5 into bracket exponential 14,400 by lambda t. t is the absolute temperature of the black body and then minus 1. So this equation gives us the emissive power of unit area of a black body. So the energy emitted by a black body is a function of temperature as we have seen from the Planck's equation. Uh, and it is not evenly distributed over all wavelengths. We are going to see that. The radiation coming from sun is essentially equivalent to a black body radiation. That's why our study has been concentrated on a black body radiation. So we are modeling solar radiation as a black body radiation. So the radiation coming from sun is essentially equivalent to black body radiation. The total emissive power of a black body is given by Stephen Boltzmann law as we all know. Uh, emissive power of a black body Eb is equal to sigma t raised to 4, where sigma is Stephen Boltzmann constant, which is 5.67 into 10 to minus 8 watt per meter square Kelvin raised to 4. So taking into consideration diameter of the sun, mean earth distance, and this substituting the values of solar constant of 1367 watt per meter square, one can obtain the equivalent black body temperature. We can calculate by knowing the surface area sigma and eb we can calculate the black body temperature of the sun which comes out to be 5779 kelvin using this above equation vice versa vice versa if the sun is modeled as a black body emitting radiation at a 5780 kelvin now we have obtained the temperature from a stephen boltzmann equation but before stephen boltzmann equation if we model a sun as a black body that is a corona temperature 5780 is a corona temperature so sun is a black body emitting 
reddish radiation at a temperature of 5780 between the wavelengths of 0 to 2.4 micrometers. Then the emission spectrum, if we plot with Excel, the, the emission spectrum will look, look like this. So on x-axis, uh, wavelength in micrometers, the range of the wavelengths we have taken is from 0, uh, uh, can say 0.1, okay, because 0 will, will not have, it will have a 0 divided, division by 0 in Excel. So we'll start with 0.1 micrometer length and then the maximum wavelength is 2.4. So corresponding to these wavelengths, we substitute the values of lambda here and then the value of temperature T 5780 we substitute here in the Planck's equation. And then for different values of lambda, we obtain in Excel these characteristics. So we obtain this characteristic of intensity on y axis it's the intensity of radiation watt per meter square micrometer. So at a particular what does it indicate what any point on this curve indicate at at a particular wavelength what is the intensity of radiation. Now if we integrate if we find out the area under the curve what does this indicate the area under Planck's curve between any two wavelengths is the power emitted between these two wavelengths so that the total area under the curve is the total radiant power emitted. Okay. So this gives this model of the sun it gives the total power of the sun emitted at 5780 Kelvin. So the actual experimental if we fit this we fit this um, our assumption equation to this it is being experimentally uh, fitted here. So sunlight at the top of the atmosphere it is fitted like at 5780 Kelvin. Now most of the practical or experimental readings they are falling, they are confirming to this, this uh, model. Okay. So we can assume that sun is a black body at 5780. So the assumption uh, is uh, valid to a great extent. Now we can see here the, the of course the graph which is the characteristic which is shown here it is x-axis is showing wavelength in nanometers. Nanometers 10 raised to uh, 3 nanometers is equal to 1 micrometer. So if you divide this 2500 nanometer by 1000, it will be micrometer that is 2.5. So this is in nanometers and this spectral irradiance is shown in watt per meter square per nanometer. You can see here from the range of say 250 to nearly 400 or 350, it is a UV range of uh, light UV range falls in this spectrum. Then visible range is between three uh, four hundred you can say four hundred to nearly seven hundred nanometers. And then infrared range is starting from nearly six hundred and uh, you can say seven hundred or even you can say seven twenty or something. And then till twenty five hundred. So the total area. Total energy in solar spectrum is 1367 watt per meter square. So the above figure, what does the above figure indicate? The above figure indicates that 95% of sun's radiation is obtained up to a wavelength of 2500 nanometers, that is 2.5 micrometers. 95% of sun's radiation is obtained up to a wavelength of 2500 nanometers that is 2.5 micrometers. The solar spectrum from 250 so 250 to 2500 nanometers covers infrared as visible as well as ultraviolet range. So it covers ultraviolet visible and infrared range. The entire solar radiation can thus be useful for thermal. Thermal is this infrared range. Thermal is useful in infrared. infrared range is use, useful for thermal applications. So the entire solar radiation can thus be useful for thermal as well as photovoltaic application. For photovoltaic applications this visible range is useful. So the earth receives solar radiation in the form of heat and light. We can use it very much in a thermal and photovoltaic applications. Now next a term which is called solar constant. So the solar radiation if we keep some sensor out of that out of the earth 
in the atmosphere and then major solar radiation that is called extraterrestrial solar radiation. The solar radiation outside the Earth's atmosphere is called extraterrestrial radiation. So the intensity of extra, extraterrestrial solar radiation received by unit surface area, unit surface area means 1 meter square, received by a unit surface area normal to the direction of propagation of radiation. So normal to the ray, if we hold a 1 meter square area at the mean earth sun distance, at the mean earth sun distance is called solar constant ISC. So it is an extraterrestrial solar radiation, which is normal to the surface of 1 meter square area. Solar radiation constant is a benchmark of radiation, solar radiation uh, used on uh, for all the calculations. One can say that solar radiation cannot, uh, solar radiation intensity cannot exceed on the earth, cannot exceed the solar constant on earth. Okay. So if someone is using solar radiation intensity as 1500 watt per meter square for some calculations, then it is a wrong calculation because it it uh, violates the concept of because concept of uh, uh, solar constant because solar constant we are measuring it in the atmosphere so and then solar radiation or then that sun ray is passing through the atmosphere and it is getting diluted so the maximum intensity is solar constant so it forms the benchmark of the highest in intensity so the quantity is difficult to measure from the surface of the earth because of the effect of atmosphere. The availability of very high altitude aircraft, balloons and spacecraft, they have permitted direct measurements of solar radiation. Some scientists have measured, directly measured the solar radiation intensity outside the Earth's atmosphere. So these measurements were made and the values recorded uh, ranged from 1322 to 1374 watt per meter square. So the World Radiation Center, WRC, has adopted a value of 1367 watt per meter square with an uncertainty of 1% one, one which is acceptable. So the value of 1367 watt per meter square is used in all our presentations to follow. Now this is just to show the distance between the sun and the earth, it is the mean distance between the sun. And the Earth is 1.496 into 10 to 11 meters, and solar constant 1367 included angle 32. This is Earth, and this is Sun, central temperatures, and all. Now there are two having known solar radiation. Now there are two components of solar radiation. First is beam or direct component of solar radiation that we we note this component, we specify this component as IB and second is diffuse or indirect component of solar radiation. Solar radiation incident directly on the earth's surface without change in the direction is called the direct or beam radiation. So direct or beam component casts a sharp shadow on the, on the object. If you see this uh, snapshot of collectors, so direct solar radiation is falling on the collector. Okay, the collectors are in sunlight and the shadow, a sharp shadow is, is cast here. So they are beam radiation falling on the panel of a solar thermal, uh, flat plate collectors. Okay, so this is an example of a beam, uh, you can say demonstration of a beam radiation component. Diffuse or direct component is due to absorption. So when we are, uh, uh, a diffuse or direct indirect component is due to the absorption, scattering, reflection of sunlight from the solid particles in the Earth's atmosphere and reflection of sunlight from Earth's surface into atmosphere. We sit in our homes, we sit in our classrooms, we sit in our drawing halls. There sunlight doesn't come. We see sunlight outside on the ground. But we see we don't need any light in our drawing hall. We don't need any light in our classrooms. We can read. So with which light we can read? With the help of diffuse light. Okay. With the help of diffuse light we can read. So that light which spreads in the shade or in the shadow is called diffuse radiation. 
Diffuse radiation is received by Earth's surface in all the directions. It is omnidirectional. Doesn't have any direction. Diffuse radiation is received by the Earth's surface in all directions of the sky hemisphere. Uh, this is just uh, to show that what is a diffuse and diet. So 1367 watt per meter square of solar constant. Solar radiation intensity is entering the atmosphere. 40 kilometers of nominal limit of Earth's atmosphere is there. And then uh, solar radiation again enters and then while reaching to the Earth's surface, diffuse radiation is 5 to 26 percent of this solar constant and beam insulation. So the direct solar radiation which is reaching the Earth, Earth's surface is 83 to 33 percent. So 33, 30 percent loss is due to the absorption in the atmosphere. Now if we add these components then this becomes the summation becomes global radiation or total radiation. So global radiation is the summation of beam radiation plus diffuse radiation. The unit may be watt hour per meter square for collective thing or maybe instantaneous radiation watt per meter square. How these components or how solar radiation intensity is measured? This is this is the the instrument called pyranometer which is used for measurement of global and diffuse radiation. If you place this instrument in, in sunlight, it will measure global component of solar radiation means this total component it will measure if it is kept in the sunlight. It has these parts hemispherical dome made up of glass then guard plate to wipe out some scattering from the ground, base plate to adjust the level, uh, horizontal level, these are the leveling screws. So if uh, this pyranometer measures global radiation, this pyranometer also can be used to measure diffuse radiations. If you install the pyranometer on any attachment with an attachment, this is called shading ring attachment. So this comes with along with the uh, pyranometer. So pyranometer is placed here and then it is kept in a sunlight. So now it is adjusted in such a way that uh, this is east to west. Now suppose sun is starting from here, it will not be directly falling on the bulb here on the hemispherical dome. So shading ring will uh, prevent the light from falling on the dome. So it will measure the diffuse radiation. So like this over a day, this pyranometer with shading ring will measure the diffuse radiation and if you have another similar pyranometer which is kept in a sunlight it will measure global uh, radiation. So with this if you know global radiation and if you know diffuse radiation you can calculate beam radiation falling on a horizontal surface. So with this pyranometer we can uh, measure the global and diffuse radiations. Uh, these pyranometers they work on uh, they use thermopile as a sensing element. A thermopile is uh, an electronic device that converts thermal energy into electrical energy. So it is composed of several thermocouples usually in series. So the thermopile consists of 14 very thin blackened strips of uh, manganese constant in junctions and those junctions they have the cold junctions and the hot junctions and the difference between cold and half junctions is uh, demonstrated, it's shown in the form of millivolt and that millivolt can be directly calibrated into watt per meter square. So that's how some, uh, that's how these pyranometers work. Now for measurement of direct or beam component of uh, solar radiation, the instrument is pyrheliometer. Pyrheliometer is used for measurement of this beam radiation. It is basically a tracking pyranometer, a pyranometer which is mounted on a two axis tracking mechanism. Tracking means following the sun's path. If sun is following this path, then this tube will follow the sun's path. It will direct uh, means sun rays will always, sunlight will always be there on this sensing element. So like this, the direct radiation is fall, uh, falls on the, uh, the sensing element and then uh, it reads out in the millivolt. This is just a snapshot of 
file element. Now uh, let us uh, now let us come to uh, discuss C the solar radiation available over sub Indian subcontinent. These two figures, so these two uh, snapshots, uh, show the direct normal solar resource in a uh, in a shaded manner and in a in a contour manner. It is shown here in this figure. Let us uh, concentrate on this figure first. Let us start with uh, the Jammu Kashmir C number. Uh, here the line reads 5.4. And then this line is a constant contour of 5.4. What is 5.4? 5.4 is kilowatt hour per meter square per day. So in this area, the solar radiation intensity, solar radiation falling on this area is uh, 5.4 kilowatt hours per meter square per day. So kilo, mind, please keep uh, this in mind that kilowatt hour is a unit of energy. So per day, on a meter square surface, this much 5.4 kilowatt hour of energy is falling. So like this, if we go on uh, looking at this, these contours, this is 5.4, then 5. Point, this is something 5.4. So the entire majority of the Indian subcontinent covers 5.4. Then in this Gujarat and Rajasthan region, 5.8, a bit higher hot region. Then here still in the eastern Gujarat and Rajasthan side, uh, 5.8, Some it is 6, it is 6, then it is 6.2, 6.4, so maximum is 6.4 and then here minimum is 4.6 in Itanagar and these northeast regions. So you can say uh, the range of solar radiation available in India is in the uh, figures of 6.8. 4 to 4.6 so which is which is a very good solar radiation intensity available same thing is is depicted here in the in a shaded form so solar radiation intensity in this 6 6.5 6, 6 uh, ranges here the highest range you can see the red uh, the the brightest red or the dark red part is here in the dark because why solar radiation intensity is 5.C here, here also 5.8, 5.8 is comparable with Gujarat. Why it is 5.8 here? Because the atmosphere, the clearness index is very good here. Atmosphere is clear here. So the solar radiation intensity in this part is high. So we have a very good solar radiation intensity in India. So uh, India possesses a very large solar energy resource. And then there are 250 to 300 clear sunshine days in a year in most of the most part of the country. So the average solar radiation we can say in India varies from 4 kilowatt hour per meter square per day to 7 kilowatt hour per meter square per day. So the solar and this solar energy source is free, abundant, perennial and clean. Another case, no one can control or restrict its availability. Therefore, it is, it is natural for India to explore the possibility of harnessing the abundant source of energy from the sun. So in India, economic potential for increased use of solar energy for thermal, photovoltaic and power generation applications is huge. So this, this figure shows what is our development in installed solar capacity in, in solar power. So in, uh, uh, this, this is sourced from Ministry of New and Renewable Energy as on 31st March 2016. So from 2008-9, in 2008-9, it was 3 megawatt peak, but it fast got exponential increase to 6,763 megawatt in 2014-15. And past 2014-15, due to the additional uh, capacity, we are targeting very high capacities of installed power. So there is a huge scope. Now where do we stand in the international market? In renewable energy capacity, the top six countries are these. So China is currently having the highest renewable energy capacity of 250 plus gigawatt. US is having nearly 140 to 145, 47 uh, gigawatt. Germany is third, nearly 100. Uh, you can say 99 to 100 uh, gigawatt installed capacity. This is all power generation. 
Japan is 50 gigawatt. India, we are nearly, we are nearing to 48, 48 gigawatt. So we need to ramp this up to 200. In Jawaharlal Nehru National Solar Mission, in uh, the 2017-22 uh, five-year plan, we have targeted solar energy uh, installed capacity uh, to 20, uh, 200 gigawatt. Then next is Italy. Italy has nearly 20, uh, 30 to 35 gigawatt installed capacity. What is the takeaway? So the takeaway is solar energy source is globally available, abundant, free and clean. It is, uh, it is, but it is not without uh, its drawbacks. So it is periodic. This is one drawback. It is dilute, location dependent and uncertain in nature. These are the drawbacks. But well, in India, we have a great uh, resource of solar energy because what I experienced here, when I have been to <laughs> Germany and other European countries and I have seen their labs, they have replicated, they have modeled the sun in their laboratories to conduct the experiments on solar energy. They have created sun using halogen lamps. We are fortunate in India that we need not model the sun because the sun is always available for 250 days and with full intensity. So we can go for our experimentation actually solar energy should be our first uh, topic of research or it should be a priority of research in india so characteristics of these renewable energy resources pose technological challenges before researchers and engineers so it's variable nature of solar energy dilute nature of solar energy it pose technological challenges before engineers and modeling uh, modeling of processes so efficient utilization of available energy sources complemented with extensive utilization of solar energy in India. Now it has become an urgent need of the hour. Therefore, it is an urgent need of the hour for mechanical engineers. Why mechanical engineers? All engineers in India to be capable of understanding, analyzing and contributing in the development of the technology of harnessing solar energy. So, uh, this is just uh, to help you to for the assistant the, these are the names of the governing bodies and institutes working for the promotion of solar energy technology at the national level ministry of new and renewable energy government of india this is app this is the main controlling main ministry at government of india level then national institute of solar energy at uh, gwalpadi delhi then National Institute of Wind Energy, it is uh, in Chennai. Sardar Swarana Singh National uh, Institute of Renewable Energy, it is in Punjab. Indian Renewable Energy Development Agency, this agency is, is, is a non-financial institute for uh, funding the solar energy projects. Then Solar Energy Corporation of India for uh, implementation of the solar mission projects, the Solar Energy Corporation of India is interested with. Indian Renewable, uh, uh, I'm sorry, RADA is repeated here. So we have already discussed this. Then all state nodal agencies like uh, Karnataka State Renewable Energy Development Agency, Maharashtra Energy Development Agency and all, all those state nodal agencies also, they promote the uh, solar energy technology at the national level. So with this, we'll take a, a, a short break and then continue our discussion in renewable energy applications. If you have any uh, questions, you can mail me the questions to this email ID, solarenergymentor at the rate gmail.com. Thank you.